In this video, we're going over customizing our very first Linux installation. We're going to be changing the desktop environment and customizing it for basically those coming over from Windows to make it far more familiar because a lot of Linux distributions are kind of foreign to Windows users. So the aim of this video is to customize a little bit, get some of that look and feel back uh, that you're used to from Windows. So we're going to go ahead and jump over the desktop here and start changing and getting into this video because I absolutely change pretty much no matter what Linux distribution I choose. I'm always doing this just because I really like the KDE desktop environment. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. I'm about to go through it right now. So now that we have Pop! OS installed, you have the basic desktop, which I showed this in the install screen. I just don't like a GNOME. This is the desktop environment that Pop! OS uses by default. I've made modification scripts and other things, but uh, that's a little complicated. And I found just installing a different desktop environment is probably the easiest thing for a beginner. So let's go ahead and do that by going to activities and launching terminal. Once we've gotten to terminal launch, let's go ahead and type some commands and get our new desktop environment. We'll do that by sudo apt install and then it's kubuntu dash desktop just like that it'll require usually to enter a password in i've already done some things in this terminal so it didn't prompt me but just put your password in and hit enter and then at this screen hit yes to continue okay you're presented with this hit okay and again and then you want to change it from GDM, which is GNOME's Display Manager, to SDDM. This portion of the install is going to take a minute, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up 2,000%. I imagine this download will take anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes on a 100 megabit connection that I have. Uh, for you, it may be less or more depending on the speed of your computer and your internet connection. Okay, with this complete, let's go ahead and reboot our machine. We can simply go in the top right here, come down to the power, and then hit restart. All right, so on the restart there, I actually had a lockup to where I had to fully reboot my machine again. Um, that's okay, I just went ahead and restarted it one more time, and then it came to this screen. I imagine it was some remnants that were left over during that initial restart, so that's okay. Just remember, try and reboot again if you do have any kind of lockup or hitch on that. And then we're presented with our new KDE login screen from GNOME. So why I like KDE is it's a little more Windows friendly. So let's log in and I'll kind of take you on a little tour of KDE uh, using Pop! OS. So this gives us the basic start menu that we're kind of used to, a nice little notification tray, and it just has a lot more of that Windows feel that we're so used to. Uh, that's kind of why I like KDE. It is a little more bulky, as I've said before, but uh, I well worth it. I, I absolutely love it. I install it on any distribution I try. I just immediately switch it over to KDE just because this is my favorite desktop interface. Now let's go over to what would be the start menu. And it looks a little bit different and this is again kind of a newer age design i'm kind of old school and used windows for almost 20 years so uh, i don't really like it so i go ahead and just go alternatives right here and then i just switch it to application menu and then it gives us that look and feel that we're kind of so used to so that's why i like to do this and i usually put my actual applications that i use up here uh, dolphin is the file manager Discover is their store, which I don't like, so I'll remove that. LibreOffice, I'll remove that. I don't use it very often. And then we have our standard setup. So let's go ahead and actually start configuring this with the settings. In the settings menu, you have a lot of powerful things. I like to just choose a theme and go with that. You can choose whichever one you like or get new. I recommend just you know going in here, picking which one you like the most. My favorite is usually Arc Dark is my favorite one, which you can actually sort by most downloads, highest ratings, those types of things, and kind of get a feel for what you like. So I'll go ahead and install Arc KDE. And this includes like an icon pack, desktop wallpaper, a whole bunch of stuff. So 
it, it's really nice. And I'll kind of switch over to the background as well because I don't like this background by default, so we'll switch that up. All right, with that installed, we'll close that. And then we just simply select it and hit apply. And this will immediately retheme kind of everything, give it more of that dark look. And uh, I just love this feel a lot better. So with that done, we can go ahead and flip over to the bottom here and I'll just kind of go through these real quick. So you can change pretty much anything in here on KDE using just the simple settings. You can change your colors, your shortcuts, all those things. Uh, one big thing I always like to do is change my global shortcuts to include like a file manager auto launch, which is pretty awesome. Launching Chrome, I like to install Chrome as well. And just a variety of different things. Just know you can customize all this to your heart's content. Another thing I like to change is the actual energy saving. I like to kind of change this to about 30 minutes for the monitor. The button handling, I just say, hey, uh, what do you want to do when the power button's done? I like to just go ahead and say either turn off the screen if this is my main PC or just go shut down. So we'll hit apply for shut down. And we're pretty much done with the settings right here. Another thing I will note is they have KDE Connect. There's an app you can install on your phone and get notifications directly on your desktop anytime you get like a text message or an application notification on your phone would be synced up with your desktop. It's really cool. Absolutely love KDE Connect. You'd come in here, install it on your actual phone, and then just simply pull it up and add it. It is really remarkable. So let's go ahead and do that. Another thing is the icon packs. Uh, definitely get more of these or install whichever ones you like. I really like the Breeze Dark, so I'm actually going to probably apply that one. Uh, when you initially do this, sometimes the icons don't show up. Right now I'm noticing some of them aren't showing up. And you need to just reboot your computer to get those icons back. But that's only when you're actually doing the initial change. So that's it for the actual settings, but there's a couple other really cool features I like about KDE. Um, specifically, let's go ahead and configure the desktop and change the monitor wallpaper. And I just did that with a right click, configure desktop. Um, we'll just change it to this one right here for now. Give it a little bit better look. So also, I, I also like to kind of show my system settings using a little widget. And that's kind of a neat thing in here as well. So let's go ahead and go panel, add widgets. And that was again, just right clicking on the panel. And I don't think by default, the one I like the most is simple monitor and it's not in here, but you can simply get more widgets and download from their store. And if we go down, we're looking for simple system monitor. And there it is, simple system monitor. We'll click install here. All right, with that installed, we'll go back to our, our widgets and we'll just type in the search at the top, simple monitor, there it is. And you just drag and drop it right over onto the desktop. And there we go. It goes ahead and shows that we only have one CPU. You'll probably have more than that because I'm using this on a virtual machine. And then it shows you like memory usage, swap usage, all these things. So it's really kind of a nice little heads up and it tells you, hey, you're using Pop OS 1904 on the Linux kernel five, which is just neat information to have. And I really just dig this monitor and you can kind of do all kinds of stuff with it and just kind of push it wherever you want. And when you're opening up, like let's say your file manager, it doesn't interfere with it at all, which is nice. So you can see it kind of come over, maximize, minimize, and widgets are just on your desktop just as kind of a dynamic item. And it's just so powerful. I love that about KDE. And you can simplify this even more and do even more stuff with it. One more thing, if you're having any kind of connectivity issues, they have a little network monitor built in where you can easily just come in here, uh, either disconnect and reconnect your network connection or just hit the little cog. And there's some really neat things you can do with these. If you have multiple Ethernet connections, you can do something called bonding and actually bond them together and get more throughput through your computer, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Windows used to have this feature. Windows 10 had that on launch, but Microsoft ripped it out and said, hey, only enterprise people should have that option. Or I think servers actually are the only ones that have that option. 
So a little bit disappointing on Microsoft's part. Just one more reason to move to Linux in my situation. A couple other things I'll mention is like the file explorer. It looks a little different and it takes some getting used to. Uh, just know up at the top, this will actually give you the path name. If you're still in GNOME instead of KDE, if you hold control and press L, it'll also bring this up to where you could manually type in, let's say you just wanted to go to the root of the file, it manually pull in that on the drive. So uh, this is really simple to get in around in. I'm not a big fan of Dolphin, so I use Nautilus a little bit. And since we've only installed KDE, we could also use some components out of other desktop environments, such as GNOME. So what I'll we'll do here is let's go ahead and just do a search for Nautilus. And this is like a, just a cleaner uh, file system. I kind of like just the aesthetics of it a little bit more. So that's why I end up replacing Dolphin with Nautilus. So to do this, um, if you hold Alt and press space, you get a little quick search to where you can just look up anything. So if we type default applications or just start typing, it'll, it'll pull in. I want to go ahead and select that. And I want to go ahead and change my file manager to Nautilus. And it's actually called files in here. I call it Nautilus because that's just its name. Uh, Gnome renamed it to, to files, really. So with that, we'll hit apply. And then from there on out, we'd be using this. And this is just a, a little bit different. Um, you can choose whichever file system you want. There's many other ones too, Thanar and, and quite a few of them. Just look up and Google which file managers, if you really want a specific one, you can totally download it and use that one. Um, so that's why, you know, I, this is just my personal preference. So there you go, we've set it up, we've customized our first Linux install, and now we're ready to jump into the next video, which is gonna go over installing Linux programs and getting you up and running to where you'll easily be able to uh, do all the things you're used to doing on your computer. But with that said, let me know in the comments section below, was there anything I missed? And a big thank you to my Patreons, I appreciate it, you make these videos happen. And I'll see you in the next video.